Paris, September 1878. The Eiffel Tower won't be built for years to come. Witness one of the most glorious spectacles the world has ever seen. The magnificent head of the Statue of Liberty has just been completed. Thousands of exhibitors from around the planet covered 66 acres of Paris with their inventions and goods. Edison's first public demonstration of the light bulb will not take place for another year. There's no such thing as electrical appliances. People don't flick switches and press buttons. It's a hand-cranked, horse-drawn world. That's the guy we came to see, the one with the crazy mustache. He's a math teacher named Augustin Mouchel. Remember, it's 1878. This is a world lit mostly by gaslight. The automobile is still years away. But Mouchot here is dazzling the crowd with his solar power concentrator. The sun belongs to all of us, even though it is 150 million kilometers away from us. Feel its awesome power. My invention concentrates the free energy of the sun and converts it into mechanical motion. It can power any kind of machine. It can produce electricity, or run a printing press, or make ice on a hot day. Et voilà! <laughs> Think of it! Sunlight converted into ice. You see, my friends, what wonders we can work if we harness the bounteous energy of the sun. The world will someday run out of coal, but the magnificent sun will always be there for us. Mouchot took home the gold medal from the fair, but the price of coal tumbled, becoming so cheap that there was no interest in solar energy. Besides, no one understood back then what the true cost was of burning fossil fuel. Mouchot's research funding was cut off. 35 years later, in the early years of the 20th century, another door opened to an alternative future. It happened in Egypt, on the banks of the Nile. Memo to future time travelers. This would be an excellent entry point for averting climate change. Egypt, 1913. That's Frank Schumann of Philadelphia. He's only had three years of schooling, but his genius for innovation more than makes up for that. Before he was 30, Schumann had invented safety glass. Its use in automobiles and skylights saved countless lives and made him a very rich man. Rich enough to pursue his real passion, solar energy. Schumann led the team that designed and built an array of solar energy concentrators. It could power a steam engine. Schumann is hoping to use the sun's power to irrigate the desert and turn it green. The official inauguration of Schumann's solar power plant in 1913 was a dazzling success. He had invented a practical way to tap the sun's energy on an industrial scale, making solar energy even cheaper than coal. The British and German governments both offered Schumann generous funding to develop his invention. It was the ideal source of abundant power in tropical regions where imported coal was prohibitively expensive. But Schumann was dreaming even bigger. In a letter to Scientific American, he calculated 
that his solar power plants, if deployed in an area of the Sahara Desert only 150 miles on a side, could supply as much power as consumed by all the industries of the world. But it was not to be. The market for a liquid fossil fuel, petroleum, was exploding for shipping, home heating, cars and trucks. Oil was abundant, cheaper even than coal, and much easier to get out of the ground and process. It took 100 men a week to fuel a ship with coal. But with oil, one man could do the job in a single day. A year after Schumann's triumph in the desert, World War I broke out. His solar collectors were recycled into weapons. Frank Schumann's dream of a solar-powered civilization would have to wait another century before it was reborn.